going to happen. And uh, originally, at the beginning of the day, I didn't really feel the energy to do a call this evening. But um, after cleaning up a number of things after the Tuesday call, um, the dynamics have shifted a little bit. And it's important that we stay in the push and in the flow of what's coming right now. So um, that's why I just felt, you know what, let's just do a short call and let's just dive into it. I'm as curious as probably all of you are to see exactly what's going to come because I generally might have an inclination, but a lot of times I really don't know exactly what's going to come. And after the call on Tuesday, it has definitely thrown, thrown us into some deeper introspection. And so, let's see, we're recording this. We're reading tonight Chapter 36, The Veil and One Step Beyond. And this is Edward Nan with SonsOfGod.com. We welcome all of you. The Company of Broken Hearts. It's really true. We are a company of broken hearts. Hard to understand. And you can't really quite explain it. But the depth of what God has done in preparing his sons. has gone very deep within all of our hearts. It just, it's like the Psalms, deep calls to deep. Well, we bless this time that we have this evening. I can always tell a son or someone that's on the path because there's that deep brokenness that they carry. The arrogance, all of the stuff of the soul, all the trying to prove, and all of that stuff has long since been burned away, ladled off. I don't see too many sons out there I see a lot of goats, not too many sons. Well, we best move on here before I can't. And move on myself besides just laying before him. So we left off on Tuesday with something that was genuinely groundbreaking. And as I've said before, 
a good steward listens, documents, and tracks on everything God speaks to them because you're so hungry for the word and you're hungry to understand. And so a lot of times you just put notes down. You don't understand what they even mean and you realize it's hard to understand from the mind that we're still processing out of. So it's very interesting where we are. Because where we left off for Ann and I began to connect pieces of the puzzle for us. Things, deep things that God has spoken over the last 15 years. It's probably been more than that now. 18, that we've been acutely in this path. Uh, And we've compiled books, literally books and books of notes and experiences and things, many of which we have not understood. But as we come closer to this time of fulfillment, things are becoming clear. Clarity is becoming something that we're becoming associated with. We're coming out of the day of things being fuzzy or, as the scripture would say, seeing in part. Seeing in the day of the partial has been a challenge because it's been very hard to put the pieces together and really understand the deep things that God has been speaking. But you know that when he reveals himself and he speaks, that it first is an impartation to your spirit. Of course, the mind wants to jump and try and figure it out, but it doesn't really matter because the spirit has received it. And at the right time, it begins to come together in spite of our mind. And so Tuesday's word began to put pieces together. And we still have a lot of pieces, a lot of pieces that we're still putting together or coming to grips with. I imagine Joseph had that, and I would imagine all of God's sons who are destined and called for this time have that. Things that God speaks that might be hard to understand and certainly hard to perhaps accept. But as we come out of the bondage of the soul, the limitations of the flesh and the mind, we begin to really understand who and what we are. And to me, that is the amazement that's happening right now the discovery of who we are. And honestly, as much as we have known who we are, and I don't want to downgrade that or degrade that, on the flip side, there is so much that we have not known who we are. Because it is so far beyond what we understand. So let's start and read a little bit here out of chapter 36. 
starting on the first paragraph. We've been talking about the renewing of the mind, a shift of paradigms, and a redefining of what we believe. Another arena that has had a tremendous impact upon the ability of God's sons to see and to step out of the limitations of this age has been to understand that we have been living under a veil or canopy. We're not talking about the veil of our flesh or what we perceive as the veil of separation that exists between us and God's kingdom. We're speaking of a veil or more accurately a canopy which has existed over the face of the globe. Regardless of religion, race, or culture, it doesn't matter. We're talking about a canopy that has been upon this age as wielded by the powers of the satanic hosts. We've talked about this canopy a number of times. It's a religious spirit, and as such, abiding under this religious spirit we've come to understand the effects that it's had in shaping our thinking and more so in creating a belief system very subtle within us that has had great difficulty in believing in those things that are really outside the box of humanity as we know it. Humanity believes in limitation and, you know, all of that which goes to it. And yet, in the sight of God, it's really the opposite. You know, you think about that scripture, you know, if you had the faith of a mustard seed, you'll say to that mountain, be moved. That's well, interesting scripture because we're coming out of the day of limitation. You could call this word also delivered from the day of limitation where we have only seen in part and we have not really known the reality that we can do. All things we should not be surprised moving forward from this point on what is going to happen when you begin to move in the authority that you have you don't have to think about well I better move in authority now I've got to put on my authority no you are the authority of Christ and this is nothing new we've talked about this before we're not believing for the gifts of the Spirit. We realize that sonship is something more than the day of the church age where they have these gifts and they go about working for God. We become the very virtues of God. We become authority. We become dominion. Wow. <laughs> we become dominion. It's like Jesus came up to the demoniac and the demoniac said we are legion for we are many that possess the man well we stand before the face of the father and say we are dominion for all authority power and dominion in Christ has been transmuted to us. We are authority. And that's why the spirit world does not know what to do, except to try and deceive you and rob you and keep the veil over you to where you don't understand what you are in God at this point in time. Always reaching, but never quite becoming. That is the liturgy of the church age, but that is not the reality of the sons. We talked about this 
religious spirit, how it's interwoven like a tightly woven fabric within the minds and hearts of people who live on the earth today. It's a veil or canopy that enshrouds what we know of reality on this dimension, creating a paradigm shared by everyone but the sons. We may not know exactly how we got here, but I know that we've that is no longer our address. That is not our address. That is not who we are. And the more we step out of this, the more that we become aware of something. And I just feel like we need to keep expanding, you know, the tent pegs of our dwelling. Isn't that what God's been doing with you for however long? You know, you read you know, that, that scripture is back in the Old Testament, somewhere in the Kings or wherever. Isaiah, I don't know. Expand the tent pegs of your dwelling. Huh. Whatever that, you know, that, that had a reality back then. Probably it was a tent and more, they needed more room. So maybe, maybe what was happening is they were expanding the tent pegs. Let's expand the tent pegs out. But we know really what was being said. Because it has to do with God stretching the suns. Expanding the tent pegs of their dwelling. To leave the realms of limitation and the partial. And move into the day of release. There are so many deep things that God wants to reveal to the suns. I know the promise is that he is going to, I don't know where the scripture is offhand, but he's going to reveal the deep things, both the deep things of the dark side, and I forget exactly how that scripture goes, but it's there, and the deep things of the kingdom. You know, it, that has been spoken to us a number of times, that he's bringing us into the deep things. This is the only way that we want to walk. You know, we walk holding hands with Enoch, Elijah, and others. And if you weren't blown out with Tuesday, then you're ready to move forward with even more of what God wants to speak about. And more of it is going to come into focus because I know we've already been here. I know we've already done this, but I don't understand that. There's something in what we are and what we're doing and what he is in us that is so far greater, and we've just been ripped off for a very long time of sorts. You might say ripped off by the enemy, but we know we've been in this process of just coming up higher, coming out of the limitation. But we have to understand that in the realm of God's spirit and the kingdom and of the renewed mind, things don't equal how it's it's a different level of of understanding of 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 grasp than it is in the physical you know we think that how the mind works and how it functions you know in this physical plane that we've lived with all of our lives is how it works you know you you're you're thinking you hear something you process it it, or you see it or whatever and and so the 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 way that we process truth and the way that we connect the dots on what God speaks is always going to follow this format of how the mind works because that's what we're associated with but the mind of the spirit is entirely different and that's why we have to be so careful because I could tell you things which probably 
don't need to be addressed this evening that would absolutely not make any sense. by the mind that we have, and yet by the mind of the spirit, it, it's, it's completely different. I don't even know how to explain it because I don't even know exactly what I'm saying here, except I am walking through this. You're walking through this. Things don't measure up the way that you think they will. The mind of the spirit is different. It's not saddled with this machine of the soul that we have, this mental thing connected to the body, you know, the cerebral cortex and so on and so forth. Take all of that out of the equation and just see yourself as pure spirit. The mind of the spirit at least that's how the scriptures refer to it, is entirely different than the mind of the soul and the mind of the flesh. That's why, you know, spiritual words are very hard to dissect and understand with the mind of the soul. And that's why visions and appearings that come can be very challenging because the mind of the soul is trying to break it down and understand it and deliver it to your consciousness so that you can then, you know, go back and look at the appearing, the vision, the whatever, and understand it. But you have to realize it's been filtered and filtered through the mind of the soul. And whatever you're grasping out of what came to you in an appearing or vision is a partial. It was a lot more than what you think it was. And that's why we're, we're constantly just working through things, and that's why things don't necessarily make sense. You know, when you speak of time, and we're talking about stepping outside the veil. Now, I know that this chapter had to do with the veil that was upon mankind as a whole and the darkness that rests upon this world. But, and, and, and that's excellent, but I'm talking about another veil that is just right here. It's paper thin. It doesn't have anything to do with the sons of darkness and, and the principalities and powers and, and all of that, you know, dimension. We're talking about another veil here, and the veil is paper thin. And it's interesting because this has been, you know, we've seen this over the last 20 years. The higher up you come in your vibration, the thinner the veil becomes. The, and so you can say, well, what do you mean veil? Well, here again, the mind is trying to, you know, lay it out, but it's the veil that separates you from the other side, so to speak, from that absolute uh, uh, existence on both levels at the same time. And so, you know, what what is... what. What's the distance between us and the cloud of witnesses? What is it? Well, it's just been a veil. And, you know, it's, it's, it's in the realm of the mind, of course, and we're still dealing with the renewing of the mind. But nevertheless, take, you know, let's put that over there on the side for a moment. The veil is what the veil is. It is just a thin frequency that exists. It's like, you know, you've seen some of the sci-fi movies. They, they walk along and all of a sudden there's this little substance in front of them, a little frequency, a little vibration or whatever it is, and they step through it. And all of a sudden it's a different world. 
you know, it, it's it's kind of similar. But the higher up in your frequency that you've come and been coming, the thinner and thinner that veil is. And before you know it, the veil will be gone because of the level of your ascension. And when that veil is fully removed, you think that life has been challenging as it is now, it'll be even more challenging. Trust me, it will be more challenging because it will become a little more difficult to differentiate between worlds because the overlapping is going to be so great. And there'll be times you're going to have to ask yourself, you know, what level is that that I just saw? Is that, you know, well, we're headed into this. We're headed into this. And it has to do with the renewing of the mind. And your eyes are going to change from being eyes that are the reflection of your soul and body to eyes that become, be, begin to become the tool of your spirit. You know, like Paul says that the eyes of your spirit might be, you know, come alive. I forget how that scripture goes, but nevertheless, and he's talking about that you might know, but we're coming into this. The veil is getting thin, very thin. There's going to be more breakthroughs through the veil to us because our frequency is beginning to come so much closer. And the transition is going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting because I don't know fully what this experience is going to be in walking in two realms with an absolute consciousness on both at the same time. I'm not sure how that's all going to work. But like I said, the mind can't necessarily understand it. It's like talking about the realm of time. Because I know that time is going to cease. And God's been talking to me about that for a couple of years. So I know it's coming. And I know, well, I can't say I fully understand all the dynamics of it, but it's it's headed this way. And so as you transition into the realm of spirit, then it becomes very interesting because you're both living in the realm of time by virtue of the physical, but you're living outside of the realm of time by virtue of the spiritual until you make that transition fully into the spirit where time ceases to exist. At that point, I think you really enter into the Melchizedek ministry who has neither a beginning nor an end. It'll be interesting to see what happens because these are all on the docket and God just wants us to keep dropping the way that we have thought about everything. The whole resurrection I'm reaching for, well, wait a second. Resurrection you already have. In some aspect within your being, you have possessed resurrection life. And I can't explain to you on what level or where that is. I just know that it is a reality or God would not have kept speaking about it. But now we have the challenge, the, the glory of God to conceal a matter, and the glory of his sons, the kings, to seek it out. Father, I, I, know, I know that we have resurrection life. I know that that frequency is in me, and it's vibrating. And I feel it. I feel the frequency of resurrection. That'd be a great title for a word. Father, I feel the frequency 
of resurrection in me. But it hasn't had its outworking yet. I'm not really sure, Father, how to do it. But I know that if I was to die at this moment, I'd be instantly resurrected because I have resurrection. And it's all right here, deep within me. The veil, you know, all these things, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom is here. Yes, I know it's spread upon the face of the earth and men don't see it. I'm concerned about the kingdom within, as Christ said. The kingdom is already here and it's within and very mystical. Resurrection is here and it's within, very mystical. We're not limited to time, and yet we still walk within the, the, the constraints of time. I will, I will tell you this. Time travel is something that you've all already done. You're just not aware of it yet. God has not revealed to you what your spirit is doing. You've already entered into the ministry of sonship. You already have. You're not waiting to enter into it. You have already entered into it. Some of the warfare you carry in your body and, and just everything that goes on with you dynamically is because of what you are doing in your spirit. And you're still running to catch up with a, an unawareness and grasp of what you are in your spirit and what your spirit is doing. So time travel, past, present, future. It's all, if you look at a linear line just laid out in front of you, you have access to any point in time. You do. I know that we have we have traveled back in the past a number of times. We've traveled way into the future. And all we've had to do is say, well, Lord, with my mind, I don't quite understand it all. It doesn't quite make sense. But then this carnal mind can't process that information. But the mind of the spirit can. We are so much more than we know. And if any of you have a trouble with any of these things, that's okay. But the call of sonship is so far more than just evangelizing a few people, healing a few, you know, all of the things that we've associated with the church age. The sons of God are truly something different, something vastly different from what we've known. So this word tonight really is about the veil and one step beyond, but maybe not the veil that we've talked about in past as far as the canopy of oppression that's upon the face of the earth where people can't even understand. They no longer have the ability to see. They have no ability to understand. But to you who have the renewed mind of Christ, it's a whole different world that we live in. And we know that the veil is getting thin. We just need to keep jumping off the cliff here. Forget stepping outside the box. I just want to keep jumping on the off the cliff. Lord, I you know, I'm tired of putting things in the box. I'm tired of the carnal mind that still I have to some degree, 
creating all these boxes. Forget it. Lord, I just want to keep jumping off the cliff. When I come to another cliff, I just want to jump off that one. Lord, you've raised us up. Delivering us out of the mind of the flesh into the mind of Christ. That means a lot more than just saying it, obviously. We can say it, oh, the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ. But I tell you, the mind of Christ is not limited. We're being brought into the mind of Christ, and that's going to encompass something that is encompassing so much more than we've understood. It's time to jettison a belief system that we've had again. Lord, help us to, Lord, help us to receive this deliverance. Tonight is a night of deliverance, and I receive the deliverance in the Word. Delivered from the carnal mind, delivered from the sterile way of thinking, and the paradigm that we still are coming out of, delivered from all of that, where truly we can begin to, you know, it talks about thinking the thoughts of Christ or thinking after Christ, something like that. We need to begin to think, visualize, picture, embrace, way outside any parameter that we've known. Whether it's the elimination of this paper-thin veil or embracing the reality of resurrection that's within us or anything else, we just need to take a big step. And I take we take that tonight, Lord. We take a deliverance, however it applies. May your anointing just permeate through our cerebral cortex and every other part of the soul and just clear it out. Deliver us out of this mind of limitation and constraint and unbelief and everything else that goes with it. Into the mind of Christ, where nothing is impossible. Well, we, Anna and I send our blessings for this short meditation this evening. We're tracking on something. We're going to keep reaching in because we have what we seek. Now it's time to really get it. Really get it. So we'll go ahead and end this call this evening, and we'll see all of you on Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. And if you haven't received the password yet to the calls, email Ann and I, and we'll give you the password to be able to get access to the recorded calls. All right, we love all of you. O company of broken hearts. Amen.